Hey everybody, it's your old pal Ron Howard from Extreme Sequences, and this is Monday Minute. Uh, yesterday I released a video called Using Gamma in X Lights to Make a Pixel Matrix Look Great. And what I mean by that is this guy right here. I have four new window pixel matrices. The first two on the left are 1,152 nodes, and the two on the right, as you see here, is 2,160 nodes. So it can be quite a chore getting these to blend in with so much density. And uh, I started fiddling yesterday in X Lights trying to find a way to make them look better. If I can make them look better on film, then I know I can make them look better in real life. And so I want to share with you how I did this. It's really not that difficult, but these are things, depending on your prop, I think you have to be careful with. In the layout on any given model, and this one here that I've chosen is that same matrix, uh, as long as it has an output number, we get to play in this world of goodies here. I've set the brightness to 10, and then there is a gamma. If I click on gamma here, this will open up a window, drop down, and you'll see that I have gamma available to me. And right now, the default is set to 1. All I did was change this to 2. Well, sort of. What I did was I changed it manually on the controller on my Culp uh, K128DB. I set all six outputs there because that's how I was testing. No sense testing here and pushing to your controller and running outside to see how it looks. It's probably best when you're starting have the controller open, have it connected, go into the string values and set it there and then look at the results. It's much faster that way. And then lock it in here because every time we push from X lights to a controller, we know that these settings here are going to override everything we do at the controller level. There's no way to lock them out. Not currently. I'm hoping one day. But anyway, this is what I would suggest. Uh, should you set color gamma 2 for your entire show? I don't think so. I think you have to be careful because if you look at the X Lights manual, dimming curve settings can be used to change or reduce the brightness of lights for a specific model. The intensity of lights is accordingly changed, reduced from its default from a value of 100. Using the brightness slider where you can reduce or increase, but not, but 99% of the time you reduce the brightness of the model in FSEQ, change the gamma curve of each red, blue, green. That, yeah, so I think what they're saying there is, is be careful and don't just blindly, uh, pun included, uh, apply these settings. Uh, you want to test them. This would be more for high density things. And the reason this was important to me as I was first watching this play back was I was getting all the skin tones here completely washed out with the nutcracker. And that's kind of a bummer. Who wants that? And so as soon as I applied the gamma, uh, it made it much better. Now, could I have adjusted saturation or the hue? or brightness from here based on that sequence effect? Absolutely. But what I found, uh, it was a one and done across the board for the effects and images, videos that I'm using on these matrices. These are slightly less than one inch spacing, vertically and horizontally. They are exactly uh, 24 by 46 for the small window matrices and 36 by 60 for the large matrices. So give it a chance, try the gamma and try different values. You're not stuck between one and two. You can put in just about any value you like in there and experiment and then drop me a line. Let me know how it works for you. That's been Monday Minute. Have a great week.